Hi, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another JavaFX tutorial. In this video, we're going to look at the JavaFX Media Player. I'm going to cover the three classes that are necessary to play media in JavaFX. And those three classes are Media, Media Player, and Media View. We're going to create a program that will allow us to play media such as the following. So this is what we're going to end up with. I hope you stick around as we create the code necessary to make this a reality. Here we are once again at our standard starting point. I've created a new JavaFX project. Let's begin by creating some private instance variables for our new class. Private stage stage. Private scene scene. Private border pane border pane. Private H box H box Private Media Media Private Media Player Player and private media view. Media view. We're also going to need a URL that specifies the media that we're going to play in our media player. Just leave that blank. And I'm also going to add a couple of buttons to control the play and pause of our video. And let's move to the initialize method where we create our user interface. We'll start off by creating a new stage. We'll set our title. We'll create a new border pane, which will be the root element for our scene graph. Now we come to what's going to be the meat of our media player. So we'll start by creating a new media object. specify the URL of the file that we wish to play. The media class represents a media resource. The media class represents the media resource. In other words, it's the file that we want to play. It also contains information such as the duration, the metadata, tracks, and video resolution. Once we have instantiated a media object, then we can instantiate a media player object and assign the media object to the media player object. And we're going to set autoplay to true 
in the media player so that the media will begin playing immediately upon loading. Next, we're going to have our stage resize to the size of the scene content. Now, we can only do that in the media player once the status of the media player is ready. So we're going to attach some code to the onReady event. And here we'll do that with a lambda. stage dot size to scene. And once we've created the media and the media player objects, we can create a media view object. The media view object is a node and that node can be attached to our scene graph to display the media that we're going to play. We're going to add then the media view to the center of our border pane. We'll create the two new buttons. And we'll just use the greater than character for our play button, just to make it easy rather than to uh, get into instantiating and adding graphics to the buttons. But certainly you can do that. And I have a video already in this series on the button that will show you how to do that. If you're interested and don't know how to do that, just refer to the button video earlier in the series. Same thing now with the pause button. And for the pause, I'll simply use a couple of pipes. I'm going to create an H box and then add the two buttons to the H box and add the H box then to the bottom area of our border pane. And I'm going to give some spacing of 10 pixels for the two buttons within the H box. We'll add the buttons to the H box, get children, add all, button play, button pause. Also set some padding around the H box just to make it look a little nicer. We'll create a scene object specifying the border pane as the root of our scene graph. You'll notice that we're not specifying a size here as up above we've set the stage to resize to the size of the content of our scene and that will be known once our video is loaded and ready to play. We'll set the scene on the stage. And we'll show the stage. And that's basically all there is to our media player. But before we can actually run this program, we need to specify a file to play. Now I already have one that uh, I have found on the internet, so I'm going to just copy and paste the URL for that into our program. And hopefully when I run it at this point, it will begin to play our video. Keep your fingers crossed. And there we are, video starts. The stage resizes to the size of our scene, as advertised. But at this point, nothing 
is happening with either our play or our pause buttons because we haven't attached any behavior. So let's go back to the program and add that functionality. Uh, first, I'd also like to set uh, the preferred size of our buttons so that they're both the same size. And we'll set that to 32 pixels. I'll do the same for the pause button. And now we'll set, and now we'll use the on action method to specify some behavior. Button play dot set on action. And I'll use an anonymous inner class. And we'll add the unimplemented methods or method. Do a little cleanup and just copy and paste. And I'll add the same functionality to the pause button. And along the same line, when we click on the pause button, I want the media player to pause. So let's run that and see if the buttons function as advertised. So let's first try the pause button and the pause button does work. And then we can try the play button to restart. And everything works as it should. You can also add a lot more functionality to this. You can build up an entire user interface. You can add uh, sliders for the volume control. You can add uh, a slider as well for the timeline and display and update the status of the amount of time elapsed and the amount of time remaining. All kinds of different things that you can do. I'm going to leave it at that for this video. I hope you have fun adding additional functionality to the media player. In this video tutorial, we learned about the JavaFX media player. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more JavaFX videos, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, please stay safe and keep on coding.